this video, we'll be going over how to use the DIA Diagram Editor. This is the recommended tool for CS1032 to create ER diagrams. We'll be using the scenario from the previous ERD tutorial that involves a fictional doctor's office. So if you haven't seen that tutorial yet, make sure to give it a watch before continuing with this one. So after you've installed the DIA Editor, there should be a DIA edit icon on your Windows desktop. If this doesn't show up, Go to the Windows search menu and type in DIA and click the icon. So DIA is also available for Linux and Mac, but I'm only going to be giving instructions in this tutorial for the Windows operating system. Once you have the DIA editor open, it should be pretty much the same for all platforms. So the first thing to draw your attention to is this drop down menu right here. So by default, we're going to be in flowchart mode, and we don't want to be in flowchart mode. We want to be in a database mode so we can make ER diagrams. So the first thing to do is go to this dropdown and go to other sheets and select database. Now you will notice that there are some other options in other sheets like ER. Um, don't select ER. We have to select database. So for the type of ER diagrams we're going to be making in this course, we have to have database selected. So the first thing we want to do is add the nurse entity from our doctor office example. To do this, select the database button that's now available since we selected database and click anywhere on this white space. You should get this little box that says table. Now to start renaming it and adding attributes, double click on it, bring up the properties. And the first box you'll see up here, the first text field, is the name of this entity or the name of this table. So since we're following that doctor's office example, we want to call this nurse. And we should be following our capitalization rules that we've been following for the other tutorials. So object entities like nurse should be in all capitals. The attributes tab right here will allow us to add attributes to this entity. So we click the new button to add a new attribute. In this case, the name is going to be the name of the attribute. We're going to start with the primary key, so we'll call that nurse ID. And the buttons down here, or the checkboxes down here, allow us to select different properties for the attribute. So since this is going to be the primary key, we are going to select primary key and click apply. So one thing you'll notice is that the actual diagram doesn't update until you actually hit the apply button. We're going to keep on going and add all the attributes for the nurse. Add first name. And since this is not nullable, that means it has to have a value in the database. We are going to uncheck nullable. We're going to add last name. Add doctor ID. And we're going to add hours per week. Now, in the case of hours per week, this one is going to be nullifiable because it's only filled in if no. So we are going to leave that checked and select apply. And we can see that the little table or the little box updated with all of the attributes that we put in. Now, there's also a styles tab available. This allows us to change how it will actually look. So I don't care too much how your ER diagrams look as long as they are readable. So it's very important that the TA who's going to be marking your assignment be able to read them. So the only big style changes you're going to need to change are just anything to make it a little bit more readable. So in this case, maybe we want to increase the size of the diagram. So we can increase the fonts in this menu here. So we're going to increase them a bit to maybe 1.5. And 1.4 and apply that. And you can see that the table got bigger as the fonts increased. Okay, so we're going to do the same thing for the other tables. And I might fast forward this a bit since it's going to be the same thing you just saw.
So our last entity that we have to add is our relationship entity called orders. And since this is a relationship entity, it gets an all lowercase name. Now we have to add those foreign keys. The first one was doctor ID. And we're going to make sure it's not nullable. And the other foreign key was test ID. Again, not nullable. Now this um, entity also had a relationship attribute, and that was date. And again, that was not nullable because it was required. So apply that. And we'll also change the style a little bit, just so it's a little bit bigger font. Makes it easier to read. Go with 1.5 and 1.4. For assignments, make sure that you read any instructions about certain font sizes for styling rules. Okay. There we go. And now we can start adding those relationships. So we can move our entities around just by clicking on them and then dragging them wherever we want. We can also, in View, select Snap to Grid. And this option will make sure that our tables always snap to these grid points that we can see in the background. So this can be useful if you want to position tables in exact locations. But it isn't required. It's just a graphical option. The next thing we need to do is start adding some of our relations. So the first relation we're going to add is between nurse and doctor. So you might be tempted to click this little button down here under database, which looks like a relation. However, this won't use the crow's foot notation that is required for our diagrams. So instead, you have to use this line tool up here. So make sure you are using the line tool. Uh, it's this right here. And you are not using this one down here. So once you have the line tool selected, you can start by drawing from one entity to another. And you do want to make sure that it like turns red, because that means you are snapping to that. So that means the line will be connected, and it will always move around with that entity when you want to move it. If it's not connected, then the line will break when you move the entity. Not a big deal, but it could be a bit annoying. You want to make sure that's snapped on both sides. Now to actually get into the settings, Double click on the line, and this will give you a few options. So the first thing we'll note is that when we first drew it, it's just like a common arrow. It's not using crow's foot notation. So to fix that, we want to go down to these different options here for start arrow and end arrow. Start arrow is the part of the arrow that we started drawing it at. So this would be the point where we started drawing. And end arrow would be the point where we stopped drawing the line. So for start, we want this to be a many to and many uh, carnality and a one participation. So we'll go into the options, click more arrows, and we'll see down here there is a many and a one. So it might seem like it's not the right one because it's facing the wrong direction, but you'll notice all of these are on the right hand side. So even though this is on the right hand side, it will still draw it on the left hand side so long as it's the starting arrow in this case. And remember, it's not going to update until we hit apply. Um, so for the end arrow in this one, it's a one um, cardinality and a one participation from the nurse to the doctor. So we'll go again to more arrows, and we will select the one one right down here, the two one symbols. Then we hit apply. It's hard to see, but it did change them. Now, since that's really hard to see, it's not that readable, we are probably going to want to increase the size. So these options here, for size, change the size of the actual um, symbol, the many symbol or the one symbol. So we can change that to one, for example. And this is just going to change it visually. So you can see that they just got bigger once I hit apply. You can also change the width of the line up here. So for example, set it to 1.5. And that makes everything a little bit thicker. So it's a bit up to you about how you want to style it. Just make sure it's readable and it's really easy to tell what kind of relationship it is. So you'll notice that this line isn't all that even. So one thing we can do is we can just drag around our entities until it looks a little more straight. You can sort of just eyeball it, or you could try using the snap to feature to try to get it exact. All that's required is that it's legible. Next, we're going to add in the relationships for the other two. So again, we start by selecting the line tool. 
we're on doctor and we drag it to orders make sure we get that red box to show that it snapped double click on the line select the type of arrow so in this case it's going to be on this side uh, one cardinality one participation and the arrows that we've recently used are going to be right in the menu at the beginning so once, since we've already used that one it's already available for us and for the end arrow it's going to be a many cardinality with a zero participation so that's going to be in more arrows i'll select it and it won't show up until we hit apply and again it's a bit small so we're going to change the size to one and we'll change the line width to 1.5 and we'll apply that once again we'll just try to straighten it out that looks okay now we need to do the relationship between orders and test. Select the line tool again, draw the line, make the adjustments. So in this case, we want it to be one and one on that side, and we want it to be many and one on that one. Change these to one to make it a bit bigger, and this to 1.5, and apply. We can straighten it out a little bit and the last thing we need to do is actually put a name on this works relationship or works for relationship so it's not required on these two because we have the entity um, the relationship entity that describes the relationship but on the one-to-one -one or one-to-many relationships we should label them so we can do that with the text tool so you just select the text tool you click where you want the text to be and you should see a little yellow box type works for or whatever your relationship may be and then you click away and you can see the text here but it's a bit small so we'll double click on that it'll bring up some properties and we're going to increase the font size let's say all the way up to 35. we could do other things like change font um, we could change colors but for now we just want to make sure it's readable apply right, okay and if we want to move it around we have to click on it and drag and we just drag it right above so at this point, we've completed our ERD diagram, but there's still a little bit of housekeeping steps we have to do before we were able to submit this for an assignment, for example. So the first one is the assignments are gonna require that you have your name and student number on your diagram. So the way we do this is with the text tool. We click somewhere um, where we want our name to go. Type our name, our student number, and our Western user ID. So that'd be the user ID you use to log into OWL or your Western email. If we wanted that text to be a bit bigger, we just double click and we can change the font size. So for example, I'm going to change it to 30 points. So one thing to keep in mind is for the assignment, one requirement is that your diagram has to be legible and readable by the teaching assistant who's going to be marking it. So that means you have to make sure all your lines, text, and everything is large enough for them to see. So for these sort of arrows and lines, a good guideline is to be at least 0.7 in size. In this case, we're using one, so that's fine. That's greater than 0.7. And the font should also be readable too. So now that we have it completed, we have to save it. So you can either click the Save button here, or you can go File, Save. And this will bring up a little file system navigator, and that will allow us to choose where we're going to save the file. So in this case, by default, it wants to save it in pictures. So the assignment, like assignment two, for example, is going to have a naming scheme when you're saving this file. And it'll usually be something like your username, followed by your company name, and then a2. So make sure you look at the assignment document for the exact naming scheme because it could be different from assignment to assignment so make sure you're following the naming scheme given in the assignment you're working on and then just hit save so that .dia file that we just created is the file that we'll be able to reopen in the dia editor and it'll also let us make changes to our file or anything like that it's sort of an editable file whereas if we were to save it as an image file that would be a fixed image that we can't really edit one again so when you're submitting your assignment, you have to submit the .dia file, the .dia file, and not an image file. So if we take a look at where I saved it in my pictures folder, you can see the file here. 
dservos 5 4 city widgets a 2gia So that would be the correct file to submit. If you see other files like .autosave or dot sort of a weird symbol than .dia, those are sort of autosave files or backup files that DIA creates automatically for you in some cases. We don't want to submit those. We want to submit the .dia file. So make sure you're submitting a .dia file. And after you've submitted it to, or uploaded it to OWL, make sure you download it again and check that it's working in your editor before you hit that submit button. Because it is your responsibility to make sure that the file is working correctly and you submitted the correct file. So the next part I'm going to show you is how you could export this into an image. This is not required in the assignment and you should be submitting that .dia file, not uh, image file. So this is just for your own personal use. If you wanted to use this in real life when you're working on a project or something and you wanted to share what you've done with someone else who doesn't have the DIA software, you could do this to export it as an image and then it could be openable in any kind of image viewer or browser. So to export this as an image, we go File, Export, and then we can pick what kind of image file type. By default, it's saying .png, which is probably a good choice, but there's other options available like .bmp, .gif, um, .jpg, things like that. In this case, we're going to just save it as .png. It's going to ask us what size to make the image. Gonna go with the defaults. So you can see here we now have the .dia file and the .png file. The .png file is that image we just exported, and it should be able to be opened in any sort of image viewer or browser. So if we double click on Windows, it should open up your default image viewer, and we can see it right here. So once again, this image file is not an editable file. You can't reopen it in Dia, but it is something you could share with other people if you wanted to show them your design. However, for the assignment, you have to submit the .dia file. So don't submit the .png, submit the .dia file. So that's all I have for you in this video. Thank you for watching, and have a great day.